Hey guys! <laughs> hey guys, welcome to a new video about Ethiopia. Today I'm going to give you some facts about Ethiopia that are really interesting. Some facts will be about the calendar, the geography, the culture, and so on. So, to begin, I will speak about the calendar, which is quite atypical for someone coming from Europe or America. So in Ethiopia, basically, we have 13 months. We have 12 months of 30 days and one month, which is 5 or 6 days, depending on the year. This month of 5 or 6 days is called Epagonema... Epa... Epagomenal days. And by the way, we're in 2012, so if you go to Ethiopia in September, because New Year is on September 11 or 12, depending on the year, don't be surprised if you see Happy New Year, Happy 2013 New Year. The month starting from the New Year, so starting from September 11, are Maskaram, the Gunt, Hedar, Tahasas, Ter, Yekatit, Megabit, Miaza, Gunbot, Sane, Hamle, Nahase, and Pagame. So Pagame is the month that is five or six days. Another fun fact about Ethiopia is that they count the hours completely differently from us. So basically their day starts at 6 a.m. So 6 a.m. is zero for them. So if you have breakfast at 2, it means that you have breakfast at 8 a.m. So we eat lunch at 6, which is 12, okay? Don't forget to take this into account if you're talking to a local, because 99% of the time they speak in Ethiopian time and not in general time, I would say. When I was growing up, I always had like some confusion with my mom because I didn't know if she was counting in Ethiopian hours or in European hours and also in the house we had some clocks in Ethiopian time and some clocks in European time. So now I have like an automatic translator in my head and like that shifts directly the hours and I cannot make any mistake. So if it's 3 in Ethiopia, what time is it here? So now I'm going to give you some facts about the geography of Ethiopia. The capital city is Addis Ababa and it is located more or less at the center of Ethiopia. By the way, Addis Ababa means new flower. So Ethiopia is about twice the size of France and it's about 1.13 million of square meters with a population of about 109 million inhabitants. Ethiopia has many landscapes. It can go from desertic in the north with the hottest place on earth with the Dalol. You can also have subalpine or alpine uh, climate if you go trekking in the Simians, which uh, are the most beautiful uh, mountains I've ever been until now, to go check out the gelada and also the endemic wolf of Ethiopia. You can also enjoy other climates such as savanna and also tropical climate. In one trip you can enjoy many different climates. So be careful when you pack when you go to Ethiopia, you have to know where you're going because if you go to Simians it will not, you will not require the same clothes as if you go to Dalol. So be careful when you're packing. One of the nicknames of Ethiopia is the Af African Plateau, which is Le Plateau de l'Afrique. Not because it has the highest peak in Africa, but because it is composed of a lot of mountains. So the average altitude in Ethiopia is about 1290 meters to 3000 and the highest mountain in Ethiopia is about 4533 meters high. And by the way, when you arrive to Addis Ababa, if you feel a bit lightheaded when you go outside, it's really normal because Addis Ababa is actually located 2,355 meters above sea level. So usually tourists that come from Europe and go to Ethiopia or other countries where the altitude is not so high feel a bit lightheaded when they get there, okay? Some facts about Ethiopia, more on the historical aspects, are that Ethiopia has never been colonized. They have their own endemic language, Amharic, as I, as I mentioned in another video. 
It is also called the Cradle of Man, 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 uh, the Cradle of Mankind because Lucy was discovered there. There are plenty of other things to say about the history of Ethiopia, so maybe I'll make a full video on that subject. So now a bit more about the culture. I think that's one of my favorite aspects of that country, my god. The culture in Ethiopia is super important and it's also closely linked to the religion in Ethiopia. The main religions in Ethiopia are Orthodoxy, Islam and Pente, which is basically Protestantism. The religious celebrations are amazing and you can still feel that the people are really... Um, that, and you can really feel that religion really bring people uh, close together and it's just amazing and I think I'll make just a video about uh, the religious celebrations. What is super fun in Ethiopia and that my sister and I experience is the dancing. So most of the dancing in Ethiopia involves the shoulders. It's like they have a crazy way of, of moving their shoulders at the rhythm of the music. I mean sometimes they're just like pfft, well, amazed. So maybe I will include some videos of that. So depending on the region, you can recognize the style of the dancing. So I mentioned that my sister and I experienced the dancing. It's because we were the bridesmaids of my cousin for her wedding in Ethiopia. And we were four bridesmaids. Each bridesmaid had to dance a typical dance from one of the regions. So maybe I will include that in the videos and you will see that most of the time we just include it. <laughs> So most, of the so most of the time the dancing involves the shoulders and uh, I don't do it super well but like, they move it at, uh, at a crazy speed and, uh, and also at the rhythm of the music and it's just amazing. The men and the women dance it with their shoulders and it's basically called Eskasta. So. Okay, I'll stop there. Something really typical about Ethiopia and the clothing is first the dresses. So the dresses, you may see them in most of the Ethiopian music clips. And also the gabi. So the gabi is this. It's pieces of cloth in cotton that you can have like different sizes and different uh, prints at the end. So this one is another one which is more bigger. And there is this one which is maybe a bit more typical because you also have some embroideries at the bottom and this piece of cloth is the most comfortable thing you would ever wear when you're cold in winter in Europe and also uh, in Ethiopia and it's like 100% cotton and it's just, I don't know, it's like something that you have to have when you're from Ethiopia so typically this one is mine, it's the one I have since, I'm, uh, since I was one I think my grandma gave it to me and I just often wear it just like this and that's it and I just keep it like this what you can do is also put it on your head so this is mainly for women who go to church and you up. and that's it and this is like this is the most comfortable thing I've ever worn I often get cold around the head when it's winter in Belgium and I just keep this and I still put this. Something, I guess that's something that rings a bell when we, when people speak about Ethiopia is the coffee. We are coffee lovers, we are coffee addicts, you can call it whatever you want, we love coffee. And also it is said that coffee was discovered in Ethiopia in the region called Kaffa. The legend says that a shepherd was watching his sheep and one of the sheep ate uh, this, this fruit. He realized that when the sheep and the goats were eating those fruits, they were hyperactive. And so he said, okay, maybe I could use that so that they can stay awake longer hours to pray and everything. And that is said to be how coffee was discovered. So Arabica coffee comes typically from Ethiopia. You have plenty of different uh, sorts of coffee which comes from Yirgacev, Harar and plenty of other regions. It has this crazy taste and I drink it so much that I could recognize Ethiopian coffee among other coffees. And what is super interesting is that we make coffee in Jabanaz. So this is probably the most typical thing someone could have from Ethiopia. So basically what we do 
is that we put the water in the jabana, we put the coffee, we close it, we put it on charcoal, on hot charcoal, and once the water has boiled inside, you can see it because you have some fumes going from here, you remove this and you have to let the coffee rest. Why? Because all the coffee powder has to sink down, go at the bottom, and then you just pour this beautiful coffee in your beautiful uh, cup and you enjoy it dark. Not everybody drinks it dark, I usually drink it with milk and sugar, but I mean when it's served with this you have to drink it dark. There is also a whole ceremony around coffee and I think I'll speak a bit more about it or maybe you film once a whole ceremony of coffee because typically at lunchtime when we finish lunch we sit down all together and we make this coffee so from the roasting to the grinding and it takes a lot of time and it's the moment where people share stuff with each other they talk and so on and typically the whole coffee ceremony involves you drinking three cups of coffee something else that I wanted to share with you is that when I was doing my two weeks trip in Ethiopia in November I was with a group of tourists coming mainly from France and they were all wondering how come those kids like it could be kids from the countryside but also kids from the city have those beautiful white teeth they just smile and you're just like oh my god this is just the cutest smile you've ever seen well we have two secrets the first secret is that Typically in Ethiopia, we don't eat sweets. We don't have much kind of biscuits, we don't really have much desserts, we don't really have uh, even sugary cakes for birthdays. What is funny is that for birthdays, we usually bake this huge bread that we share with family and neighbors, but no cakes. But I mean, nowadays, uh, because it has become more globalized, of course, in Ethiopia, of course you find cakes and of course you find biscuits and so on but I mean it's not really part of the culture maybe the next the generation from now and so on will use sweet cakes but uh, what I'm saying is that from the generation of my mom and previous to that they didn't really eat that much sweets so one that's super good for the teeth and the second secret is the use of a stick for the teeth. So this is my stick, it has some carvings which is kind of cool and this is like super typical to see people going around like this just with the, with the stick in their mouth. What happens is that usually it's a stick that comes from the olive tree and then you let it dry and then you just uh, carve the, the edge, like one of the edge. You can make some drawings but then that's not really necessary. Then what you do is that you chew the end. When you chew the end it becomes like a small brush and then with this you just go on your teeth. You have some time to kill, you just take your stick out and you continue. And you just do this on all your teeth. And I've been using sticks I think all my life. Of course I have a toothbrush at home, of course I use toothpaste. I usually use this just after cleaning my teeth or sometimes you can just put a bit of toothpaste and also use it as a as your toothbrush and it's like super handy you can put it in your pocket and so on and if you want just to clean it you can you clean the 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 edge with some boiling water and some salt. I think this is the reason why people in Ethiopia have such beautiful teeth. I mean you can see any commercial you can see any kid in the street. I mean they have beautiful smile, beautiful teeth and I think this is one of the reasons why. Now I'll be talking about more uh, actual facts So from nowadays. The first thing to know is that Ethiopia is a republic and uh, its current prime minister Abiy Ahmed Ali won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2019. The African Union, which is composed of about 55 states from Africa, was founded in 2001 in Addis Ababa. So someone that you've been seeing a lot lately on TV, the general director of the World Health Organization, is from Ethiopia. He's a microbiologist and his name is Tedros Avnanon Gebreyesus. The national airline, Ethiopian airline, is the number one airline company in Africa. 
Something that is also super, in super interesting to know about Ethiopian Airlines is that they were the first one in Africa to have an all-female crew operating flights. And if I want to go on on facts about female in Ethiopia, the president of Ethiopia is actually a woman and her name is Sally Bork Zaude. Whoop whoop! <laughs> so this concludes my video about some fun facts and interesting facts about Ethiopia. Don't forget to buy a Gabi when you go to Ethiopia because this would be your BFF on cold nights in Belgium or anywhere else. And don't forget to bring back a beautiful Jabana and a brushing stick. Thank you guys for watching this video. I will be back with you soon with uh, another content. Tell me if you like this video or if you want to learn more about one of the aspects I've talked about. So thank you for now and see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.